Well, that's a super powerful idea of generating the language, almost like uh, rigorous A-B testing for you. Uh, yeah. that works to yeah. find the, the best customer for your thing. I mean, to me, advertisement, when done well, just finds a good match between a human being and a thing that will make that human being happy. <laughs> yeah, totally. And do that if, as efficiently as possible. When it's done well, people actually like it. You yeah. know, it's, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of examples where it's not done well and it's annoying. And I think that that's what kind of gives it a bad rap. But um. But yeah, and a lot of the stuff is possible today. I mean, obviously, A-B testing stuff is built into a lot of these frameworks. The thing that's new is having technology that can generate the ideas for mm -hmm. you about what to A-B test. So I think that that's exciting. So this will just be across like everything that we're doing, right? All the metaverse stuff that we're doing, right? It's like you want to create worlds in the future, you'll just describe them and then it'll create the code for you. So, so natural language becomes the, the interface we use for all the ways we interact with the computer with with the digital more world. of them yeah yeah totally yeah which is what everyone can do using natural language and with yeah. translation you can do it in any kind of language um i i mean for the personalization is really 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 interesting yeah it unlocks so many possible things i mean i for one look forward to creating a copy of myself i know and, we talked about this last time but this has since the last time this becomes now we're closer much closer. Like I could literally just having interacted with some of these language models, I can see the absurd situation where I'll have a uh, large uh, <laughs> or a Lex language model and I'll have to have a conversation with him about like, hey, listen, like you're just getting out of line and having a conversation where you fine tune that thing to be a little bit more respectful or something like this. I mean, I, that's that's going to be the... That seems like an amazing product for businesses, for humans, just not not just the assistant that's facing the individual, but the assistant that represents the individual to the public, both, both directions. There's basically a, a layer that is the AI system through which you interact with the outside world, with the outside world that has humans in it. That's really interesting. And you that have social networks that connect billions of people, it seems like a heck of a large scale place to test some of this stuff out. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the reason why creators will wanna do this is because they already have the communities on our services. Right. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of the interface for this stuff today are chat type interfaces. And, and between WhatsApp and, and Messenger, I think that those are you know, just great, great ways to to interact with people. So some of this is philosophy, but do you see do you see a near term future where you have some of the people you're friends with are AI systems on these social networks, on Facebook, on Instagram, even even on WhatsApp, having having conversations where some heterogeneous, some is human, some is AI. I think we'll get to that. Um, you know, and and. You know, if only just empirically looking at, and Microsoft released this thing called Xiao Ice several years ago in, in, in China, and it was a pre-LLM chatbot technology that so it was a lot simpler um, than what's possible today. And, and I think it was like tens of millions of people were using this and, and just, you know, really, you know, became quite attached and, and, you know, built relationships with it. And I think that there's, um, you know, there's services today like Replica where, you know, people are doing things like that. And um, so I, I think that there's there's certainly, you know, needs for companionship that people have, you know, older people. Um, uh, and it's, I, I think most people probably don't have as many friends as they would like to have, right? If you look at, um, there's some interesting demographic studies around that like the average person has, the number of close friends that they have is um, fewer today than it was 15 years ago. And I mean, that gets to like, this is like the core thing that mm -hmm. that I think about in terms of you know building services that help connect people. So I think you'll get tools that help people connect with each other are, are gonna be you know, the primary thing that we wanna do. Um, so you can imagine, you know, AI 
assistants that, you know, just do a better job of reminding you when it's your friend's birthday and how you could celebrate them, right? It's like right now we have like the little box in the corner of the website that tells you whose birthday it is and stuff like that. But it's, um, but, you know, at some level, you don't want, just want to like send everyone a note that's the same note saying happy birthday with with an emoji, mm-hmm. right? So having something that's more of an, you know, a, a social assistant in that sense and like that can, you know, update you on what's going on in their life and like how how you can reach out to them effectively, um, help you be a better friend. I think that that's something that's super powerful too. Um, but yeah, beyond that, um, and there are all these different flavors of kind of personal AIs that I think could exist. So I think an assistant is sort of the the kind of simplest one to wrap your head around, but um, I think like a mentor or a life coach, um, you know, someone who can give you advice, um, who's maybe like a bit of a cheerleader who can help pick you up through all the challenges that, that, um, you know, inevitably, you know, we all go through on a daily basis Mm -hmm. and that there's probably, you know, some, some role for something like that. And then, you know, all the way you can, you can probably just go through a lot of the the different type of kind of functional relationships that people have in in their life. And, you know, I, I would, I would bet that there will be companies out there that take a crack at, at, um, at a lot of these things. So, um, I don't know. I think it's part of the interesting innovation that's going to exist is, is that there, there's certainly a lot, um, like education tutors, mm-hmm. right? It's like, I mean, I just look at, you know, my kids learning to code and, you know, they love it. Um, but you know, it's like they, they get stuck on a question and they have to wait till like, I can help answer it, right. Or, or someone else who, who they know can help, help answer the question in the future. They'll just, there will be like a coding assistant that they have that mm-hmm. is like designed to you know, it'd be perfect for teaching a five and a seven year old how to code and and they'll just be able to ask questions all the time and you know it'll be extremely patient. It's never gonna get annoyed at them, right? Mm-hmm. Um I, I think that like there are all these different kind of relationships or functional relationships that we have in our lives that um that are really interesting. And I, I think one of the big questions is like, okay, is this all gonna just get bucketed into you know, one singular AI, I just, I just don't, I don't think so. Do you think about, this is actually a question from Reddit, uh, with the long-term effects of human communication when people can talk with, in quotes, talk with others through a chatbot that augments their language automatically, rather than developing social skills by making mistakes and learning, uh, <laughs> will people just communicate by grunts in a generation? <laughs> I mean, do you think about long-term effects at scale, the integration of AI in our social interaction? Yeah, I mean, I think it's mostly good. I, I mean, that that was that question was sort of framed in a negative way. But I mean, we were talking before about language models helping you communicate with, uh, it was like language translation mm-hmm. helping you communicate with people who don't speak your language. I mean, to, at some level, what all this social technology is doing is helping people um, express themselves better to people in, in in situations where they would otherwise have a hard time doing that. So mm-hmm. part of it might be okay because you speak a language that I don't know. That's a pretty basic one that you know I don't I don't think people are going to look at that and say it's sad that do we have the capacity to do that because I should have just learned your language, right? I mean that's that's a pretty high bar, but. Um, but overall, I'd say um, there are all these impediments, and language is an imperfect way for people to express thoughts and ideas. It's you know one of the best that we have. We have that, and we have art, and we have code. But language but is also a mapping of the way you think, the way you see the world, the way who you are. I and mean, one of the applications I've recently talked to a person who who's a, a actually a jiu-jitsu instructor. Um, he said that when he uh, emails parents about their son and daughter, um, that they can improve their discipline in class and so on, he often finds that he comes off a bit of more of an asshole than he would like. So he uses GPT to mm-hmm. translate his original email into a nicer yeah. email, now, I, I, the we more hear this polite all the time. one. <laughs> we, we hear this all the time. A lot of creators on our services tell us that one of the most stressful things um is basically negotiating deals with brands and stuff like the business side of it because yeah. they're like i mean they do their thing right and and you know the creators they're they're excellent at what they do and they just want to connect with their community but then they get really stressed you know they go into their their dms and yeah. you know, they see some brand wants to do something with them and they 
don't quite know how to negotiate or how to push back respectfully. And sure. um, so I think building a tool that can actually allow them to do that well is you know, one simple thing that that I think is just like an interesting thing that that we've heard from a bunch of people that that they'd be interested in. But I'm mean, going back to the broader idea. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I just Priscilla and I just had our, our third daughter. Um, a Congratulations! Ago. Thank by you. The way. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. It's, and and you know, it's like one of the saddest things in the world is like seeing your baby cry, right? But like, it's like what? Why is that, right? It's uh, like, well, because babies don't generally have much capacity to tell you what they care about otherwise, right? And it's not actually just babies, right? It's um. You know, my five-year-old daughter cries too because she sometimes has a hard time expressing, you know, what what um, matters to to her. And and I was thinking about that, and I was like, well, you know, actually, a lot of adults get very frustrated too because they can't they have a hard time expressing mm-hmm. things in a way that, going back to some of the early themes, that maybe is something that you know was a mistake, or maybe they have pride, or something like all these things get in the way. So I don't know. I think that all these different technologies that can help us navigate the social complexity and actually be able to better express our what we're feeling and thinking, I think that's generally all good. And um, there are all these, these concerns, like, okay, are people going to have worse memories because you have Google to look things up? And, and I think in general, a generation later, you don't look back and lament that. I think it's you know, just like, wow, we have so much more capacity to, to do so much more now. And I, I think that that'll be the case here too. You can allocate those cognitive capabilities to like deeper, more exactly. nuanced thought. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's change. So with with uh, just like with Google Search, the the addition of language models, large language models, you basically don't have to remember nearly as much. Just like with Stack Overflow for programming, now that these language models can generate code right there, I mean, I find that I write like maybe eighty percent, ninety percent of the code I write is is uh, now generated first and then edited. I mean, so you don't have to remember how to write specifics of different functions. Oh, but that's great, and it's also it's not just the the specific coding. I mean, in the in the context of a of a large company like this, I think before an engineer can sit down to code they first need to figure out all of the libraries and dependencies right. that you know tens of thousands of people have written before them yep. and um you know I, I, one of the things that i'm excited about that we're working on is it's not just um you know tools that help engineers code it's tools that can help summarize the whole knowledge base and 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 help people be able to navigate all the internal information i, mean, I think that that's um I, I, in the experiments that i've done with this stuff i mean that's on the public stuff, you you just you know ask ask um one of these models to you know, build you a script that does anything, and it basically already understands what the best libraries are to do that thing and pulls them in automatically. It's I, mean, I think that's super powerful. That was always I, I, the most annoying part of coding was that you had to spend all this time actually figuring out what the resources were that you were supposed to import before you could actually start building the thing. Yeah, I mean, there's of course the flip side of that. I think for the most part is positive, but the flip side is if you outsource that thinking to an AI model, you might miss nuanced mistakes and bugs. They're go- you're, you lose the skill to find those bugs. And those bugs might be, uh, the code looks very convincingly right, but it's yeah. actually wrong in a very subtle way. But that's, that's the trade-off that we, uh, that we face as human civilization when we build more and more powerful tools. When we stand on the shoulders of taller and taller giants, we could do more, but then we forget how to do all the stuff that they did. <laughs> it's a it's a weird trade off. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's I think it is very valuable in your life to be able to do basic things too. Yeah. 